Hey guys, welcome back to Tears of the Storm. Today I'm going to be talking about the newest hero. I'm going to be talking about Lunara and some tips to play as her and against her. So the first thing I want to go over is her abilities and most importantly, her traits. So her trait is Nature's Toxin. Your basic attacks and damaging abilities poison the target, dealing 70 damage a second for 3 seconds. Every additional application increases duration by 3 seconds up to a maximum of 9 seconds. This means that will take 70 damage a second for 3 seconds on any damage, this is an ability as I'll show you here, and I'll show you that it's indicated by a little leaf under the target. An ability causes one stack, auto attacks cause another stack, as you can see the first one just ran off. And there you go, that's 3 stacks. That means for the next 9 seconds, they'll be taking 70 damage a second. This is fairly strong. Now another thing I want to tell you that a lot of people don't seem to, to realise is if you use all of your abilities quickly, you can almost instantly get 3 stacks. This is very simply, if you go with an auto, coupled with um, a Q and then the W straight away, they have 3 stacks in them. That means they're going to be taking a lot of damage. And because your Q is an AoE, particularly as you get into the later game and your talents start to spec and you can start um, hitting more and more and more people at once with your abilities, you can get 3 stacks on the whole team quickly. And while this isn't going to kill anyone, or it's not going to kill anyone at high health, it's going to make their healer work really hard, and it's just incredibly good at poking. Now, you have to be very careful here, because she's very, she has no HP. Like, she has absolutely no HP and no escape. So if you get locked down, stunned, rooted, or anything, you're going to die. And her auto attack isn't that far. As you can see, like, that's the same range as, as an Arthas root, or a Muradin stun, or something. Like, you will get got if you try and do that too quickly. However, if you do have someone like a tank or something to back you up, you'll do incredibly well. Talking about her auto attack and the range of it, it's tied to her movement speed. Now I'll go over her movement speed in just a second, but I want to um, tell you guys about how stutter stepping. So normally stutter stepping is simple, you just go click, and then move, and then click, and then move, and then click. And now as you can see it does kind of work, but that's because I'm in the rhythm of it. But your auto attack is tied to her run animation. As you can see, like I'm not doing autos because I'm cancelling them because the run animation's in, and because I'm obviously just taking too long. So. You have to be careful when stutter stepping is her to pause for a beat most of the time, at least I find myself doing so, in order to get that auto off. Otherwise, the auto just won't go off at all. Now, a really cool thing about uh, her abilities, particularly is her W, is you can only cast it when you actually have your stack on something. So if you quickly stack up loads of things, you can actually just cause W and hit everything with it. Now, if you get more stacks, obviously, that's going to last longer, so you have more of a window to use your W, but a lot of people find themselves using W for no reason. I don't really like that. So anyway, so let's talk about her movement speed. So as you can probably see, her movement isn't exactly consistent. It's not exactly the same speed regardless of where you go. And if you actually take a look at the character movement speed thing here, you can really understand how this works. So if you look, at when she's standing still, her movement speed is 100. As soon as you click, that movement speed goes up to 175%, and it then degrades down to 50% towards the end of her run animation. At which point it will then reset to, to 100%, and then instantly go up to 175. This gives her this kind of galloping of quick, slow, quick, slow movement. And while it doesn't affect you as playing, aside from the fact that the run animation is tied to her auto attack, what it does mean is it means that she can move rather unpredictably, even if she's moving in a straight line, and it can mean that she can juke quite a lot of abilities, and that initial boost means that you can get out of range of quite a lot of melee assassins just in that quick sort of succession, and you can cancel a lot of auto attacks doing that, which is very, very nice. So just be aware of that. When you move straight away, you're going to be moving like the, the, the one unit, shall we say. If we call each of her gallops, each of her animations a unit, you're going to move the first portion of that unit a lot faster than the last one. So if you're running away from someone, I recommend you try and run away from them. You don't try and do like the classic mini start step just to get out of the way. Use your full animation to really get away from her. So, because of that, she can reposition incredibly easily in uh, in team fights and in skirmishes and whatever. So, if someone's trying to attack you, like say say if we have these knights on us, if they try and attack you, you can easily just gallop away, and then you can get out of the range of an auto or an AOE effect or something like that just before it goes off. So, so she is incredibly good at that. But the trade-off is she gets slow towards the end. So. I'll go over talking about talking about how you play against her, and I'll talk about this again then. But be be wary of people who are going to be aware of this, and are going to put your skill shots, put their skill shots, for when you're in the slow part of your animation, and it's going to be incredibly difficult for you to get out of them. So you can move quite unpredictably to make the most out of it. Um, the way her, the way she works is her you can change her direction while she's in the air, if if you can see what I mean there. But the movement speed will degrade at the same rate as it needs to. So a couple of things that people tend to do, and, and one of the things that I disagree with, is people leading, um, and by leading I mean, I mean opening the fight with Q. Now while I don't think this is a bad idea, I think be very very aware that Q has the exact same range, or rather just a touch more as you can see there, 
than your auto attack. So if you're going to get a Q off and you're going to get in range of that, I massively recommend also getting an auto off or at least trying to. This is of course if you don't take the range talents. Now this isn't a build video, this is very much tips and tricks, so I'm not going to go over a specific build for you. But if you do take that talent, start poking with it. If you don't, try and get autos off as soon as you can. Speaking of using your Q, you are going to have to lead them with it. So it's, it's a delayed kind of explosion. I'll show you what it looks like. Only at the end there with that little little explosion that goes off is when damage on the stack is actually dealt. So you're going to have to lead them a little bit and make sure that they, that they do get hit by it. In a team fight, if they're all clumped up, this is going to be amazing. Uh, a lot of your abilities are going to punish people for being clumped up. And if you can get stacks on the whole team and then um, get one or two stacks, depending on what ult you take, and then use W to get the third stack off, not only are they all going to be incredibly slow, but they're all going to be taking loads of damage for a really, really long time. So, one of the cool things about Lunara is she is a basic attack assassin, but she does have spells behind her. She kind of plays kind of like a little bit like Falstad would, um, if you if Falstad caster was actually working. Um, so, what I mean by that is, is she can do loads of damage with her basic attacks, and as a result, she doesn't need mana. But having mana is really going to be the thing which pushes her to be a really, really strong hero. And I do think she's a very, very strong hero at the moment. So... As you can see, this is level 20, she has 690 mana, and she's regening mana at not a massive rate. She's also regening health at not a massive rate either. But, as you can see, just by using your abilities and stuff, she can run out of mana surprisingly quickly. But, because of the way she works, and because of the way her damage works, you can survive without mana. But you need to be mindful of how much mana you've got. Don't use a Q on one person if, you, if, you, if it's going to mean you don't have enough uh, mana to cast W and you have stacks already on five people. Don't do it. It's going to be incredibly stupid. As a result, she works well with um, with Malfurion, which I think is a great little... If that was intentional, brilliant, because that's how that lore, obviously, Druids and Dryads work really well together. But, in general, she can run out of mana, but just kind of be mindful of it, but don't worry too much about it. And even if you do run out of mana in the middle of a team fight or whatever, just start basic attacking things. You'll deal a lot of damage, even so. So... When you, you when do you use your abilities? Now Q you use to poke and just get more stacks on people or person if you're just having a one on one. And I massively recommend saving your W for the point of which a team fight. If you've got three stacks on people and loads of people are stacked up, loads of enemies and creeps and whatever are stacked up, and they're just casting W. Obviously, if they're on incredibly low HP, because you can tell by the uh, the poison bar which you see on their health bar if they're going to die from that poison or not. If they're just short and they have no form of healing. Which a lot of heroes don't. They have no form of healing. Healing fountain might not be enough. Just cast W. Make, put them, pr give them the pressure of having to heal, or they die. And I think that's very, very good. But most of the time, you're going to want to save your W for when people are either trying to escape. A lot of people are trying to escape, or when you just have poison on loads of people and you just want to increase the damage a lot more. Remember, mo uh, slowing movement speed isn't just good for killing people when they're running away. It can be very good for stopping people repositioning and just keeping people in the fight when they really don't want to be there. So. Another thing you need to be aware of is keeping is being mindful of your CDs, um, and by CDs I mean cooldowns on on all your abilities, not necessarily your ult. So obviously you need to be aware of your ult because your ult is going to be a lot of your escape and a lot of your damage. But you need to be aware of when you're going to be able to cast your abilities and when you're not. So if you can't cast W and and everyone's about to start running away, you you're not going to be able to do much unless you take talents to work for that, and that's fine. You can do that. But I would say that in most situations you're not going to want to do that. You're going to want to take talents that increase your abilities in team fights, and then have to use your abilities well to make sure you don't in a position where you need to change your build. That's how I think. You can some people some people could be differently, and that's perfectly fine. But just be mindful of your CDs. If you see them all clumped up, and you can get five of them, or two of them, or three of them uh, with a Q, do so. And if a low, and if everyone in the enemy team has a poison on them, one or two stacks a piece, pop W, get a massive hit on them. Don't just pop it on one person. Wait wait for your abilities and remember to just keep basic attacking and then wait for the perfect opportunity to do so. You'll find yourself getting a lot of damage off if you do that. One of the cool things about Lunara compared to other basic attack assassins is she doesn't have any escape at all. The only escape she has is her passive which is 20% faster movement speed which we've already talked about isn't a consistent 20% buff as opposed to people like uh, Rayna who can use um, Revolution Overdrive which is his level 7 talent which gives him movement speed increase, that's just a flat passive movement speed increase, and you have Falstad and Valor who both have rolls or vaults or whatever you want to call them that are just massive reposition through anything moves. Now she doesn't have that, as a result she's incredibly susceptible to positions that lock her down or getting out of position incredibly quickly. So you need to be aware of where your team is and use your abilities to get with your team so you're not out of position incredibly, incredibly easily, which is 
surprising. Now, a part of, now, now you can use this of course with with abilities like um like leaping strike, and of course you can help yourself with W and stuff like that. But you just need to be aware of where your team is massively more so than Reyna and definitely more so than Valor and Falstead because they can get they can get out of positions if they find themselves in a bad spot. Lunara cannot. To that effect, you need to be aware of Lunara's HP. She has incredibly low HP. Like I don't know if you can see here, but she has three bars, and by bar I mean this little section here from the thick bar to the um to the to the end or to the previous section. She has three bars worth of experience. That uh, experience of health. This is 2,851, as you can see down here. This is incredibly low. This is level 20. She will die so quickly. I'm 90% sure she has less attack... Uh, less. Oh, I can't speak today, sorry. She has less health than other assassins. And coupled with the fact that she can't position, she has no escape. Blah, 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 blah. She's really, really easy to kill. So be very, very, very aware of this when you're going into a team fight or going into a skirmish or whatever. If you do choose to use Leaping Strike, be aware that it can, and will, most of the time, throw you over a wall. Now, of course, this isn't necessarily bad, but sometimes it can be bad. Now, it is kind of awkward, so if I use this here, it doesn't. But, if you use other, like in the Garden of Terror, the mercenaries up in the top, in the top left there, if you use Leaping Strike on them, you will go over the wall, similarly on Infernal Shrines and a few others. And what this means is, while it's not normally too bad, it can stop you positioning to attack someone, or you can just jump over all into a fort's worth of range. Just be mindful when using Leaping Strike. It will put you out of position. Of course, it has two charges, so you can use it to quickly get back in position. But it will get you out of position. Just be very, very careful of it. Now, you can use it rather quickly. By the time you land, you can use it again instantly, more or less. And you are unstoppable for the duration. However, if a team catches you out with a stun, you're going to die. Just, just be mindful when using that. As I said before, she has no escape. Now, she can solo camps with help. She can't do camps on her own. Uh, obviously she can at level 20, anyone can, but I say she can't because she has no way of locking them down or any form of CC. And what that means is that she's going to take loads of damage. Way more than other people, particularly people like Sylvanas. Just because she's going to um, she's gonna have no way of stopping them dealing damage to her. I'm level 20 here and I'm almost about to die. Admittedly I've done this incredibly badly by missing hundreds and hundreds of autos. But, that's how much health it puts you on. She's really, really bad at doing it. But, because of her damage and because of the way that works, if she has help from anyone, like a tanker, or a healer, or a Savannah special, or someone like that, she's going to be able to take them down really, really easily. And she's going to help anyone who's trying to take them quite easily. Particularly someone like Illidan, she's going to do well with, as long as he can tank them. That's going to be about how to play as Lunara. Now, how to play against Lunara. Now, we're going to have talked about this before, but I just really want to go over some things if you're having trouble dealing with Lunara. So, one of the things, I'll put minis on for this so one of the things that she has, or rather doesn't have, is any form of HP. Now I know I've just talked about this, so you just might have a bit, but if you are in a position where you can deal, you, you stun her or something, or you lock her down, and you know you can get a full combo off, or just loads and loads of abilities off, do so. You're going to be able to deal loads of damage to her, and while her poison may suck for a little while, you, if you, you're normally going to be able to deal more damage than she does. She has little to no self-healing. Even if she takes all the self-healing talent she can. But, as you can see there, extended trading is not going to favour you. That poison is just going to deal too much damage for too long. And even when uh, you're out of range and you think you're safe, the poison is still going to be damaging you. Just be very careful of this. Likewise, she has no escape. So any form of root, stun, anything is going to really, really start to hurt her. Now, a cool thing that I haven't really talked about is her Wisp. Now, the Wisp is an E ability, which is just allow you to scout. You can reposition it, but you can only reposition it once every 5 seconds. And uh, it lasts for 45 seconds and will be killed by one auto attack. It's pretty easy to kill. But killing it means that you've been spotted by it. And being spotted by it isn't necessarily the best thing. So anyone... It, it is kind of high skill cap level because you have to be aware of it and, and be looking at the minimap. But if you play Lenora enough, you will be looking at the minimap. So this is kind of her pseudo escape. What I mean by that is, is she'll be able to see anyone ganking coming. And so she'll be able to avoid them. However, you can just do the overextend gank where you come in from a really weird angle in order to catch her off. But just be aware that if you are attacking or trying to attack Lunara, she's probably going to see you coming. So be aware of this and try and avoid the obvious route, otherwise you will just get scouted by the Wisp. An interesting thing about Lunara, as I mentioned before with her speed, she goes down to 50%. I'm primarily looking at Tyrand here and other people who have those kind of zonal skill shots. It means that because of the, her, her movement speed, it means that at some point she's going to be moving incredibly slowly. 
And if you can predict that, which you can after, after you've seen her running for one or two yards, you can land your skill shot for when she's slow, or position it for when she's slow. It's so difficult to avoid a skill shot if it lands on you as you're moving at 50% movement speed. Because while you're quickly going to move higher than that, it's like if you catch it just as you enter 50%, or just after you do the initial boost of movement, it's so difficult to avoid it. So try and predict that and land it for those uh, th those um those spots. And as far as trading goes, go for trading, but don't be surprised if you put her down to half HP and then her poison ticks you for like a third of you for like another quarter of your HP. Like, don't be mad. It, it's just it's just how she works. So if you are going to trade, make sure you trade as hard as possible. And uh, really commit to it. Don't half ass it. She will just poke you down and punish you for it. So that will be about it. I think she's incredibly fun. I also think she's really strong. I think I think that um, that she's got a few builds that are floating around at the moment. And I think that they're all different. And they all, they all have their own merits. Uh, I think you should try her out. I think you should play about with builds if you've got her. And, and keep some of these tips in mind. I see too many people saying that she's just too weak. And she just gets caught out by anything. Which is true. A good dive comp will annihilate her incredibly quickly. But... If you do everything well, you shouldn't be in a position where if you're getting dived, you're instantly going to die. You, there's talents you can pick and there's ways you can play to stop that happening. Uh, of course, that, that just comes with practice and knowing how the game works. So, play her, try her out, get good with her. I really hope I see her in some competitive play. I think she's strong enough, more than strong enough, in fact, to be there. So, yeah, I have Mr. D. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.